Hey everyone, today I want to talk about a problem that has been bugging me for quite some time, and that is how do we actually test the true performance of a kitchen knife? So I'm sure you've seen a lot of videos from YouTube and other places, and people were just doing a lot of tests with very vague um, descriptions. Things like, oh, this is the best knife I have seen. Oh, this knife cuts gray. And things like, oh, this just flies through. And when they are actually doing the test, you can see it's actually not that great, but people still say that for various reasons. So the thing is, most knife tests currently are very subjective with the words saying like sharp, smooth, the best knife I've ever used. But there's no real way to actually quantify the performance. It's all based on feel, and yes, feel is important, but is there a way to actually measure it? Well, there are some attempts, and you've seen videos with people holding the knife on a scale, and there's some sort of jig there. When you do the cut, it gives you a number. This is likely the hardest or the largest pressure that you're applying to the actual cutting process, but that's only a single number. So it doesn't reflect how easy it is for the knife to go into the knife, or how easy it is to, to cut through the entire process. Because as we know, cutting is a continuous stroke rather than a single point of pressure. So was the cut smooth? Did the knife struggle? Or did it stick? This single number cutting test doesn't give you that. And there are other issues. For example, what are we cutting? Are we cutting a potato? Maybe a tomato? Or are we cutting meat? And how thick are those produce? Are you cutting a very big potato or are you very cutting a very thin one? All these variables makes the actual test very hard to quantify. In short, knife tests are very hard to repeat accurately, and we almost never see the true performance of a kitchen knife. And I certainly felt this way for a very long time. In fact, for the past year or so, I'm trying to find out if there is a way that I can be more comprehensive in this sort of knife test. I just couldn't convince myself that there are a very solid way of doing such tests. And most importantly is that Am I able to perform a test that can actually let me measure or quantify the actual cutting process as a process rather than a single digit? And about two months ago, um, I found a scale. That's this one here. Okay. That's this scale. And uh, it does, you know, measure the... Um, so when you are trying to cut, it does give you different readings, just like normal scale. But what it does differently, or what it does sort of um, in an advanced way, is that it has a COM port here, so it's a data port here. And it is able to continuously output the reading to a computer. Like, like so. Okay, so if I'm giving it a cut, so it does give you readings, all right? Uh, you just cut. Yeah, see, it's giving a reading. And now I'm setting it up so that it can output this to a computer. Okay, so you put a data port, a data port. Okay, move it away. And then I'm just gonna it has a hardware dongle, so it is quite an advanced. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna do 100 milliseconds, so 10 readings per second. All right, now I'm just gonna start collecting. And I'm doing a cut. It does, so if you look at here, right? It does give you some sort of readings. Um, it is reading very fast, so you may not be able to see the real-time plot. Um, but what it does is, as soon as you stop, so I, I did four cuts. Um, and, okay, let me just do that here again. So, if I'm just gonna 
So okay, so I'm just gonna try to do it again, right? So just zoom out a little bit so you see. Okay. So it's nothing happening. I'm now doing a push, push cut, and push cut. So I cut three times. Okay. So as you can see in here, it has three distinct actions. And um, it is very hard to interpret this graph here because they are measuring the change, the rate of change of the pressure. So it's not the actual pressure reading. It's actually logged in here. Export it. All right, okay, so this is a, let's just see here. Okay, I'm just gonna, sorry for doing this in a really ad hoc way. This is the way versus how many samples I collected. And obviously I set it to 10 samples per second. So you are able to interpret um, the time as well. That's easy. And you can see these are different waveforms and that indicates this is the true process of the cutting rather than just a single giving you that single largest uh, pressure at, at apex and as you can see in this way I am able to capture the entire cutting process and if say in the future, I will be able to limit myself to um, with just a push cut or pull cut, and I will be always using a flash potato. At least, or it's in a more controlled environment, and you don't have every time have this go wrong, that go wrong, or different person doing different tests. I know every time I'm doing a push cut, I have the same height, and I can relatively easy to control my push cut to be about the same. I'm not sure it's 100%, but at least the, the variance is minimal. And re really, this is just me want, want to share something with you. And, and maybe I can come up with different ideas or new ideas in the future. So please put your comment down below and let me know what you think about my methodology. And thanks very much, guys. I'll see you next time.